In this video, we're going to continue to talk about the basics of ZBrush. And in the previous video, we explored the 2.5D brushes to create artworks. And also, we started to use some 3D meshes. And uh, we also add a look to the 2D part. Now, in this video, we're going to concentrate more on the 2D part or 2D drawings. But first of all, I want to open up the previous project. So you can see here that we use the, especially the, the smudge tool, in my case, I've used the smudge tool to give this kind of painting-like drawing. And you can see it, the, the effect is kind of a 3D effect, even though it's a 2D image that we, we are generating when we work with 2.5D brushes. So I want to open up the, the project right here, which I, well, actually I saved this in a document not to me not to be mistaken with a project so the document um, it's kind of a canva and we can save a, a standard jpeg or a, a zbrush document so in this case i saved this into the maxon folder you can see here the the path which is uh, c programs uh, maxon and um, i saved this into the document folder so zdocs is the name of the folder so if i save it there then i can open it up directly from the lightbox and this is the the previous project the, the project that we created in the previous video so i can always open up the, the 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 document and when we open up the document we are we can start where we left off so i can continue here again to to work on this artwork using the, the various 2.5D tools, or I can use these as a reference. So if I click on the texture and I open up this as a texture, I can use this as a, as a reference image. So you can create like sketches, 2D sketches, 3D sketches, 2.5D sketches, and then continue to work with 3D modeling and 3D sculpting. So if I wanna continue here, I can take again the, the smudge, which is probably my favorite 2.5D brush, and I can continue to model this painting right here or 2D artwork. But the effect is going to be in 3D. So when we need to work in 2D instead, we need a 3D space. This is kind of a paradox. So when we work in 2.5D, it's going to be a 2D file, but we'll have the effect of a 3D. But if I want to work in plain 2D, I need to move into the 3D space, and then I need to activate the edit mode. And I need something to paint on. So right now I don't have anything here where I can paint on in 2D except in 2.5D. So to do that, we already saw that we can use the, uh, Z, uh, the quick sketch in Z plugin. And this is going to create for us a blank plane or a blank combat. And this is going to be like the standard setup when we open up Quick Sketch. So we're going to see then how we can change the brush, the, the stroke, the alpha, the texture, the material, the color. This is uh, going to affect the way we can sketch here in, um, in ZBrush. So I can use this default setting, which uh, looks like carvings more than like uh, a paintbrush or a you know, something like a pen or a pencil. It looks like more like carving out shapes, but if you want, you can definitely use this as a sketching tool without any more setting, but we're gonna see how we can also create like a, a, a simpler brush. But you can see right here, I'm using symmetry. I'm like sketching a character. You can use here this for sketching, do concept, work like uh, character design or car design or weapon design. You can sketch anything you want. And this is the first way we can, again, create like a 2D artwork or 2D sketch or 2D draft or 2D concept in, uh, in ZBrush. And again, we are now in 3D space. You can see we are in editing mode, which means that we are in 3D. So if I want, I can uh, change this and work with the with the parameters on the top also so we're gonna explore more these parameters at the top in this video we're gonna focus also on that and also again on the alpha and the texture 
Now, if you get rid of the texture and the alpha, you can have like a simpler brush. Now, the texture also can be used as a reference. So if I go into color and go to fill object here, you can see that the Canva or the, the, the plane has been filled with the texture, which is kind of a checkerboard right now. But we can change that texture and use any other if you want to use, again, like a, a, um, a reference image to paint on. So it's kind of tracing out the, the image using the tools. So we can, again, let's go to Quick Sketch again, restart everything, and uh, let's change the texture here. You can see we already have some texts that we, we can use, and we can also import, load other textures. So let me use this one here, for example. So this is kind of a marble texture. So if I go to, again, the color, fill object is going to fill the plane with this texture right here, which, uh, you know, it has a problem of pixels. Now, sometimes images can, can't can uh, be the, the, the quality that we want. So we need to make sure that we have enough pixels in the image and also that we have enough polygons in the object that we are using. These are the two main uh, settings we need to check if you want high quality. Now, if I import here the image that I created from the previous video, so th this time I'm using the, the image, not the, the document. So you can see now I've loaded that text right there and I can use it right here. I can use it many ways if I wanna use it as a reference. So I'm gonna deactivate alpha and again, let's go to color and fill object. So you can see now I fill the object with this image. It's upside down, don't know really why, but we can always rotate this and adjust it. We can always like fix things uh, if we use the correct tools, but we're gonna talk about transformations later, like uh, move, rotate, and scale. In this video, we're gonna uh, see something else, but you can see just by also orbiting here around, you can just place it in the, in the correct uh, position. But let's just go back and Again, use the the standard uh, quick sketch. So I'm just gonna reload quick sketch, and again we are back at the beginning. So anytime you can go back, and the first time probably you wanna do this often, just to restart uh, with a, a standard setup. So if I change the color here and fill the object, I can also use a, a wider color or a, a, like a brighter color, and I can just paint out. Now you can see this is more like standard painting, more like what we can do in Paint or Photoshop or Krita or other painting uh, applications. So I can paint out anything I want. And again, I can use symmetry if I want, or I can press X and deactivate the symmetry. Now let's go back. Of course, I can use masks like I did also in the previous video, but uh, we're gonna stick to the to the part where we talk about drawing and texture and using images. So I can also use, again, this texture in the texture slot. And you can see, again, I, I can fill it like this, but I can also use other methods. Now, this is upside down, but doesn't matter. I can use it like a, a reference image there. So I can paint and trace on top of that. So this ZBrush document is now a simple image, essentially. This is the, the main concept. Now let's try to have more control and to manage this texture a little bit more. So I'm gonna fill again the, the project, but you can see it doesn't uh, like override everything. Now this depends also on the intensity. This is a really important parameter there on the top. You need to make sure that you control and manage all those parameters right there. So right now we need 100% RGB intensity. Otherwise, it's not gonna fill the Canva totally. And of, of course, we can always reload Zsketch again. Now, I'm gonna use this uh, drag rectangle with the standard tool and with the texture. This is another way we can drop in uh, an image in our project. And make sure that you have RGB or material RGB activated. You can see now we are working with symmetry. I'm gonna press X, deactivate symmetry, and that's the image once again. Now it has like a blurred um, edges. So I'm gonna change also the, 
the alpha. Alpha is kind of a way you can affect the the aspect of your brush. So if I select this like rectangular alpha and I click and drag, you can see this is going to be like more uh, square image. Now you can also change the, the blurriness of the borders of the edges. You can select like circular brush. Let's pick, for example, this other alpha right here. There you go. So essentially alpha is alpha channel. Where the white spots are, you're gonna paint. Where the image is transparent or black, you're not gonna paint. So you can see you have many different types of alpha to have many different types of effect on your brush. So this one here is kind of an arrow or you can use like a more uh, brush setting. And if I deactivate the texture and use a simple color, you can see that I'm painting that color but using the alpha channel, it's kind of a stencil effect. So again, it's like I'm using a mask. It's like I'm using not the entire image, but only where the white part is of that alpha. So alpha are really important to, again, customize your brush. Now also drag rectangle can be used to, do, to insert images or logos or graphics and things like that, so text. So if I click now with drag dot, I can place this by dragging the image around. And this is too small, but you can change the size and time. So you have also the draw size in the settings above. So this is why it's really important to know all the settings, all the basic stuff before we actually move on. Now, if I move in the interface layout, in the previous video, we use also legacy, the legacy layout so that we have quick sketch there ready to be clicked but we're going to go back to the to the standard user interface which is used at the moment we're going to use this but remember that you can find this sketch in the z plugin menu now we have other tools like live boolean we're going to talk about that later we have move rotate and scale we're going to talk about that later and we have sculpt trees mode for the sculpting and here we have like this uh, part on the left that um, concerns the, the painting. So we can paint with or without alpha, with or without the material, simple RGB. We can paint just with the material if we press M. And then we have the intensity that there, we can change it. So if I drop down the intensity, I'm just gonna have like a weaker paint, a weaker brush. So it's not gonna be total uh, opaque. And then we have this part on the right, which concerns the, the sculpting. And then we have other tools that can be used either for sculpting or painting. And you can also paint and sculpt at the same moment in ZBrush. And again, we have draw size and focal shift. Now focal shift, it's about the blurriness of the borders of the brush. And then we have dynamic, dynamic mode, and we have the possibility to repeat the last command and adjust the last command, but we're gonna make some examples some practical example in just a minute. So you can see how many things we can change here. Now I wanna use another method. I wanna start with a 3D mesh instead of using quick sketch. So one way is to start with quick sketch. Another way is to start with a, with a 3D plane and then just fill out with the color that we want using the material and we need to go and fill the object. And you can see there now the, the image appeared with a really pixelated um, visualization. Now, this is not an issue about the image. We saw that the image is fine. So the other issue, when you have this problem, it's uh, that you probably have a low poly object. So you need to check the quantity of pixels that you have in your image and the quantity of polygons that you have in your 3D object. So if we go, if we go in the polyframe, we can see that this is, this is looking like pixel art more than like a realistic painting or a really detailed work of art. So I want to change here the quantity of polygons. And if I see this like a little bit uh, there on the background, it's because I have the intensity too low. So I need to fix the intensity it needs to be higher. But first of all, let's make polymesh 3D out of this. Now one way, and yeah, you can see that I filled out with the orange and if I paint on this with the white, I can definitely see that this is looking like Minecraft or like pixel art. So, um, well, you, you may wanna create something like this 
but most of the time you want more quality, more resolution. So we can do that, we saw in the previous video, by initializing the shape or you know, before we, or we can change the shape and just create more subdivisions. But what if we already here and we, we, we cannot use initialize? Well, there is another way. And we can use this, again, for sculpting reason and for painting reason, which is going to the geometry and use the divide button there. So when you click on divide, you will increase the number of polygons, but we cannot see that. So let's just click and deactivate and activate again the polyframe to see the change. So if I scroll now from the first level of detail to the fourth, you can see that it's increasing the number of uh, polygons. So the, the higher is that number, the higher is, um, is the resolution and the better will be the sculpting and the painting. But also I will create a heavier object. Now I can always go back if I change my mind and I can restart all over. And you can also deactivate this subdivide smooth modifier if you don't want to smooth the, the corners. You can see that the corners were a little bit smooth and curved. But if you don't want that effect, you just need to deselect that smoothing uh, modifier. And we have other settings, but just, let's just focus on this. So I'm just going to continue to divide. And right now you can see the corners are not smooth. They are, they are still straight. And that's the effect that I want right now. So the more I click and the more I divide, the more polygons I will have, the higher resolution I will work with. So I will deactivate now the polyframe and let's paint again. Well, I cannot paint white on white, so um, and also make sure the, the intensity again it's uh, high enough. So you need to again control and manage all this stuff. So let's first fill everything. You can see it's not totally orange now, even though I have orange color, because I have the intensity, which is a little bit down. Let's use the stroke now. And let's change the material and the color. And nothing happens because this is the, the same color. Now I wanna change the color. And also, especially, I wanna increase the intensity. Make sure the intensity is high, because if it's at zero, you will not see anything. If it's like really low, it will be really difficult to see. So you can see now it works. I can see the, the brush. And if I adjust the intensity, I can change, you can see here, the opacity or transparency of, of the brush. So if I have like a transparent brush, probably I need to brush many times over and over, one on top of the other, so I can see something more uh, visible or stronger. Also, we have focal shift again, if you want the, borders more blurred or less blurred, depending on how you adjust the focus shift. Just look at the two circles that you have there. One is the more intense, the inner one is the more intense part. The outer one will be like the, the gradient or the, the blurred part. So you can see how this is gonna affect a lot the, the brush. And also we have the draw size, of course, to change the size of the brush. So if I use a really low intensity, you can see I cannot see anything. But if I increase it just a little bit, I have a totally different type of brush. So it looks like airbrush or like, um, I don't know, like spray, things like that. Now you can also remember the draw size per brush, which means that when I'm gonna use this brush right here, which is the standard brush, it's gonna always start with this size. And also I can do the dynamic mode per brush. I can remember the dynamic mode, which is uh, another uh, feature to, to paint. Now also I can use the adjust last, which means that it's gonna adjust the last stroke that I've done. So if I do something like this, okay, and I go there, I can adjust that. And I can also go the other way, so it's gonna become like white. So I can like change the intensity of that and go like in the opposite. Or I can use the, so this is not like just like doing redo, it's like really adjusting. And I can also do repeat last. So if I continue to repeat, it's gonna repeat the same stroke all over again, so it's gonna be more intense, just like painting more and more on top of that. So these are like secondary 
parameters that you can use. Now, if I frame these now using the F or the frame, and then I um, zoom a little bit, I can also use this other button right here to replay last relative, which is gonna like uh, replay the, the action that I done. So again, these are like secondary, but you need to make sure that, especially this uh, middle part here, everything needs to be under control. You need to understand if you're sculpting or painting, if you're using just the material, which is the intensity. Now I wanna also use the sculpt just to show you that when you do sculpt and paint together, you need to also make sure to control not just the brush intensity, but also the, the Z intensity, which is the, the 3D part. Now you cannot really see, but right now we are painting and sculpting. If I orbit a little bit, you can see that I have extruded that part, not only painted on, on that. Now we're gonna spend the rest of the course talking about 3D modeling, 3D sculpting. So this is just to show you that, and also if you change material, this is gonna be more visible. You can see this is now way more visible. So depending also on the material that you choose, and usually when we sculpt, we use this wax uh, material, which is pretty red. So you can see there, I can sculpt. And I can adjust again the intensity now of the sculpting and also the painting. We need to control the stroke, the alpha and all the rest. And you can see now we have this other effect or the, the focal shift, the draw size. We can always adjust the last stroke. So don't worry if you think it's too intense, you can always make it more intense if you do repeat last, or you can adjust, uh, adjust it a little bit with the adjust last. So those are for like adjusting. But before you do that, make sure that you know what you're doing. So if you're painting, sculpting, painting plus sculpting, and so on. Now I'm gonna move again in this flat color and let's see also other examples to how, on how you can manage and control the brush. So I wanna use the, the, the other here. I, I wanna deactivate the Z add because I just wanna paint in this video. So um, we talked about the material RGB, RGB and material. And we also can use or not use the alpha. So if I apply the alpha, again, I can have a different brush. So this looks like more like a wet brush or like a, a bigger brush or like more realistic than, than the other perhaps. So it, it has an alpha, it has like a shape applied on top of it. So it's working like a stencil again, and you can do many different shapes here. So your brush could have many different effects. But if I deactivate the alpha there, you can see this is gonna come back to the standard brush. So the A button is to activate or not the alpha if you are using the alpha. Otherwise, it's, you may not even want to consider that. And that's also, well, you can create your own alphas, by the way, you can create your own brushes, you can create just as we create our own texture, but we're gonna talk about also alph alphas later because they are, they are really important also for sculpting. And um, so let's continue here. And I wanna use now a another color, so I'm gonna do, Again, the, the fill object. And again, make sure the intensity is at 100% if you don't wanna see things in the background. So if you wanna override totally everything, you need to have 100% the, the intensity of the brush. And now let's use some other brush. And I wanna use it also in combination with the, with the material. So make sure that you fill everything when you have material and RGB selected, you can fill everything up with the color and with the material. So you need to make sure that intensity is 100%. And now we can work, play a little bit also with the, with the not only the, the material, sorry, the RGB. So you can see now material and RGB or standard RGB, they looks the same because I'm using the, the same material. So if I use only the M, which is painting only the material, I'm not gonna see anything. But if I change material now, let's use this one. Um, let's see, this one here. Well, now it applied everything. 
to to all the the canvas. So let's just go back. And yeah, if you fill the object now, it's gonna fill it with the material, which which is orange, and with the color, because we are using uh, material RGB intensity one hundred percent. Okay, I wanna go back here to materials, and now I, I wanna paint just with the material. And okay, you can see RGB doesn't it doesn't work. So let me change. As which color? Okay, this is just paint. Above is just the material, and we can do also Z add and material. So we can use that everything: material, color, and sculpting. So these are three different effects: just material, just the color, or everything together. This is just to show you again that it's really important how you set up that. Um, parts on the top the intensity the alpha the material material rgb now anytime you want to start all over just remember to fill out everything with the material with the color and with the intensity of 100 and then you can continue so again i'm going to use the the white color fill object use the correct color there in the color selector and that's it Okay, I want to show you now how you can insert reference images. Now we saw that also previously, but I'm going to show you some other technique. So I'm going to get a public domain image here from RawPixel, which is a, a website where you can download public domains. I'm going to save this image into the ZText folder in the Maxon ZBrush folder so that when I go in the light box, I will find it in the texture panel so if i here you have uh the texture right here okay now you will have like a lot of textures you can see we have many different textures for many different materials we also have like graphic design decals and text logos signs so all that stuff can be applied so we can definitely work with images just like applying decals in our project. So I'm gonna double click on that. You can see the images now, it's right there. And again, we we can just do the drag rectangle. Hold shift if you wanna be more straight and orthogonal. And you can also use layers, just like in Photoshop. So you can create different layers by clicking on that little button. So this will be like our first layer. And I can frame this with F and then I, I can create a new, a new layer and just draw with a brush on this layer. So this will not affect the, the other layer. Now we can use these layers either for painting or sculpting. So we're gonna see those later a little bit more. Now I wanna use all, also, uh, only RGB and I don't care about the alpha. I wanna have a really small brush, pretty black, so this is white, so I'm going to switch the color. And now this is black. So this is one way I can trace my reference image that I've placed on my 3D Canva, just like that. Now this could be an environment art, could be character design, um, any type of concept design. And you can see I can turn off and on layers, just like in Photoshop, just like we, like we did with the subtools here. And I can continue to add more layers. So now I am in the third layer. Just gonna sketch here some white. Um, you can see there. And you also can adjust the opacity of that layer using that um, bar. So you just click and drag. But we're gonna see that later again. So this is one way we can draw in 2D, sketch in 2D using references. Another way is to go in the texture panel go all the way down and do load image from here. So I'm just going to click and load. And this is going to be placed there like a, a background. And I can click on that and start to move it. So this is already using the, the move tool. We can also rotate it and scale it. Now, if it doesn't show up like that, it probably it's like um, you are moving with the, with the view. So just 
adjust a little bit the, the, the zoom and it should be visible again. Now you can see it, it's applying the image on the matte cap red wax material. So this is why it's appearing a little bit reddish. And again, you can move, rotate, scale, which is kind of a orbiting and that's it. Now let's go to the flat color. So it, it's gonna be displayed nice and with the natural color. And now we are in the 2.5D mode, so I can only work with the brushes, but if I can, if I want, I can move into edit mode and I'm back again in the edit mode. So I can just paint on, on top of this. I can sculpt on top of this. I can use layers again. And uh, well, that's just another option. So let's say that I wanna work with the 2.5D, I can switch to the 2.5D visualization and I can start to brush with my brushes or I can use 3D objects instead. So if I, if I want, I can use the reference image and use 3D objects or I can place a plane on top of that and just move into the edit mode again. And if I go again in the image make, I can adjust the model opacity. So the, the image that's behind is gonna be more visible. So I have the reference there on the back I have my white paper in 3D on the top, and then I can use that to trace. Now, to I wanna get a character sketch to do this example. So if, if I look for here, you will find in on the web a lot of characters. Again, this is from Raw Pixels, it's uh, Francis Drake Pirate, so I am gonna get this um, image to do the example, but you can also draw your own character or you have it perhaps on paper and you want to bring it here in ZBrush. And remember that all these images can be used later to create 3D models. So we are just beginning here. We're just exploring the 2D part, which is the beginning. So I'm going to create again a plane in 3D. And again, let's increase the resolution using the initialize before we even start to, to paint or sculpt. So we have just the, the good resolution. Let's go to edit. We can go to polyframe to see the number of polygons. Let's go to texture again and let's load the image. Now in this case, we loaded the image after we created the object and it just went there on the background. So all we need to do, let's change the material and now let's go back to the texture, go all the way down and change again the model opacity, which is gonna be again our plane on the front so that I can display better and visualize better the, the sketch on the back. Now I can frame with F key and I can start to paint on top of this. I just need to choose which paint, uh, which brush I wanna use. Now you can also open the brush by pressing the B and if you press the P, I, you can get to the pen brushes. And you can try with pen shadows, you can try with pen, you can try actually with any brush that's out there. So this is the pan shadow. I think that pan shadow looks pretty fine. And you need to make this pretty small. And you can just paint, start to paint around. So it looks like really a um, pencil sketch. And adjust the intensity. You can also press the space bar. You can access all these settings right here. So you have the, the, the type of brush. Again, I, I wanna use some standard settings. I'm gonna go for the standard brush. Then I can adjust the alpha, the stroke, the color, the texture, the draw size, the focal shift. I wanna, I can decide if I don't wanna use the the add, the Z add, so the sculpting or only the painting, and the color. Now you can see now I'm just also sculpting, which is not what I wanna do here. So I'm just gonna deactivate Z add. Just wanna use RGB, and. I think that's gonna be fine. Just make sure you have the correct color. That's a still uh, a little bit low res and too big for, for the painting. So I can go in the geometry, divide my plane a little bit more so I get more quality and adjust again the size. So you can see how many things we need to control and manage. And also I can use layers again. So let's me, let me switch check the intensity and there you go. So I think this is a good setting to, to create some sketch in my opinion, but you can do whatever you want. You can create your own 
brush. And you can see now I'm just tracing. And of course, if you have a tablet and a pen, it's going to be better. I'm doing this with a mouse, so it's pretty hard. But, you know, it's just an example for you to understand how you can create. There you go. So I just jump a little bit forward. And again, you can save this as a document. Use this later on. You can continue to work on this. So I'm just going to save in my document folder again. I'm going to save this as um, the sketch. So I can retrieve this anytime. Or I can export it as an image, just as we did in the previous video. So I can create my sketch in my ZBrush, or I can uh, just draw them on a piece of paper and upload them as a texture. You really have many uh, ways you can do this. You can also save the brush. Yes, right now I'm saving the brush um, as a preset, so I can use it. So I'm going to navigate into the folder, save as the save as a brush. So I'm going to navigate in the Z um, brush folder and I can save it right here. So I can do standard uh, painting or sketching. So it's going to memorize the size, the all the settings that I've done so far for the brush. So the next time I can just use this, which I have already prepared. So this will be all for this video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to give us a little thank you, please join the channel as a supporter. Thanks for watching and see you in the next.